Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Hakuoki Kyoto Winds, Nagakura's route. Almost, I was gonna almost gonna say Harada's route. <laughs> we just finished him. Even though each man displayed his professionalism differently, they were all clearly prepared. As they quieted down, Hijikata turned toward me as if he had only just noticed my presence. We did get some information on Kodo. Apparently, he visited Masu's with some men from the West. What? So the rumors that he was seen in Kyoto were true, but that's all there is to it. My father was someone from the West? But my father went missing in Kyoto. How would he be with someone from the West? But no one had an answer for me. Preparations for the raid began immediately. Within moments, the compound was like a beehive, with soldiers and officers running back and forth. The tension felt thick enough to cut with a knife. I found it affecting me despite my best efforts. My encounter at Masu's created some of their current headache, and I'd hoped to make up for it. Hey, can I... Oh. It became clear to me that I had very little to offer when it came to preparing for a raid. At the end of the day, all I could do was stay quietly to the side and avoid being a burden. Just then I heard someone's voice out of the blue. We don't have enough men. Kondo has only 10 soldiers ready to fight. Hijikari and I have 24 apiece, right? Everyone's sick. Not so funny, eh, Saito? Everyone's sick is true. My son is sick right now. We have literally just came from the doctor for him. Ah, that's right. There were a handful of men who were bedridden from a swift food poisoning epidemic, leaving them shorthanded in battle. No, my son doesn't have food poisoning. <laughs> he is... An ear infection. Lovely. They planned on dividing the troops in half. Kondo's troop will go to Ikeda Inn, and Hijikata's troop will head to Shikoku Inn. So you think we'll bring them along on this one? It's a night mission. It'd be perfect. Them? We lost a couple the other day, but there should still be a few left, right? I heard they won't be seeing combat for a while. They're having some difficulty adjusting. They stop listening to orders as soon as they see blood. It's rather inconvenient. What? I swore I heard something before about a reaction to blood, but this was something I was not supposed to hear. The two men hadn't realized I was listening to their conversation. But it was crucial that I don't say anything. They've got to be spinning in their graves. Didn't they choose to do this so they could fight? Sano. You only say that after someone's actually dead. Yeah, I guess you're right. They aren't really dead, are they? In fact, they're even harder to kill now. There was no doubt that what I was hearing was not meant for my ears. I shoved my fingers into my ears and closed my eyes tightly. The best I could do was make sure I didn't hear anything else. Girl, can you be more obvious? <laughs> I can't hear you, la la la. Um... Who is, is this person? I don't know who this is. I'm just going to use a voice. Oh, what are you doing here, Yukimura? Oh, I was... Oh, kind of. I had, Kondo and Nagakira's voice are close, so that could have been Kondo, so whatever. <laughs> My eyes flew open to see Kondo in front of me. Uh, um, I, I was... I couldn't just sit there. I told him the truth, how I'd felt so useless, and left my room to find some way to help. Oh, of course, I see. I know how you feel. The men are pretty excited, aren't they? Yes. Excited? More like bloodthirsty, to be honest. Would you care to join us? What? That was not what I'd expected him to say. You mean, go on a raid with you? I don't know what I could. You see, many of my men are out with food poisoning, so we're short on... Short understaffed. Short under That sounds weird to me. I may just be losing my mind, though. <laughs> well, we could certainly use a messenger, but if you'd rather not, there's no need to feel obligated. Hmm. You raise a good point. Now that he mentioned it, I did remember hearing that Kondo's troop only had ten people in it. Well, all right. If I'll just be a messenger... 
His face split into a grin, and I found myself on the way to Ikeda Inn to accompany their raid. Kondo's presence was relieving, and his good nature gave me comfort in asking him a question. Um, Kondo? Your uniform is different than the one your other men wear. The Shinsengumi's unique light blue uniform made it so anyone in Kyoto would recognize them. However, Kondo's uniform was white, almost cream, setting him apart from the, his men. Oh, this? This white uniform is for charging into dark areas, allowing us to see each other with more clarity. I see. I didn't know the core uniform came in so many varieties. Their usual uniform was well-fitting, and the color stood out, but this white uniform was more elegant. I smiled while I looked at his uniform, and I braced myself for what to, was to come. Hour of the Dog After we arrived at Ikeda, I was sent off on several short errands nearby. I returned to hear Nagakira talking to Okita. Well... Looks like we hit the jackpot on this one. Not sure if they're brave or stupid for meeting right next to a government building. I knew they'd be here. After all, they've always met Ariketa before. Sure, but the night Furutaka gets arrested? That just seems sloppy to me. Aren't they afraid of looking suspicious? Well, obviously. They're somewhat less than normal. They are meeting Ariketa in, aren't they? Nagakira and Okita's conversation was very light-hearted, which didn't quite suit the subject matter. Perhaps the Choshu were trying to trick the Shinsengumi. I certainly wouldn't have known. Wouldn't have known? Known? <laughs> that was a derp there. Whatever the reason for their behavior, however, neither Nagakira nor Okita seemed worried. Heisuke noticed me as I approached and jogged over. So, how'd it go, Chizuru? Did you see anyone from Aizu or the Judiciary Commissioner? To be honest, I didn't really see anyone nearby. So, they still haven't made their move. We told them even before it started to get dark. Settle down, Heisuke. The larger man smacked Heisuke playfully on the shoulder with a bark of laughter. Besides, it won't do us any good if they show up. If this is going to happen, we gotta do it ourselves. Yeah, I guess. It's just, don't you think running in on our own is a little reckless? Heisuke frowned, and Takeda, who was on standby behind Heisuke, nodded in agreement. Charging with this amount of men is reckless. We should wait for Aizu Domain's reinforcements. If you say so, Takeda. All right, why don't we wait a little longer? But no matter how long we waited, the officials never came. Hour of the Boar. I looked up at the sky. The moon inched itself further across the sky since we'd arrived at Ikeda Inn. Damn it, it's getting pretty late. What do you want to do, Kondo? It'd be pretty lame if we just sta sat here all night. The chief had been quiet all this time, but when Okita addressed him, he finally stood up to speak. We can't wait a moment longer. Soji, Nagakira, Toto. You lot, follow me. Okita nodded quietly but firmly. Well, I will secure the front entrance so you guys have at it. What? Are you not going to come, Takeda? It's all good. I mean, we don't want him in the dark and then mistakenly stab us, you know. Oh, actually, we may mistakenly stab him. Okita. What are you suggesting? Now, now, if you want someone charging, we want someone reliable anyways. So with that said, take care of the outside, Takeda. <laughs> Yukimura, can you stay away from the Ikeda Inn? Things are going to get dangerous. That place is full of rebel soldiers. Oh, sorry, I burped a little. <laughs> we don't intend to allow them to escape, but better safe than sorry. All right. He stood up, smiled curtly, and ran to the end. We are the Shinsengumi, retainers of the Lieutenant General of the Aizu Domain. By imperial decree, you are all under arrest. His declaration was met with a 
cacophony of yells and screams erupting from out of the inn. Giving the enemy a good loud warning that he's about to kick the tar out of them. That's Kondo for you. Eh, it seems like good form anyway. It's polite to let them know what they're up against. Oh, so your definition of good form is putting us at a disadvantage? Heisuke and Nagakira grinned at one another as they sauntered towards the inn. Yeah, CG. We act with the authority of the government. Resist, and you will be shown no mercy. Then the battle began in earnest. The yells of men and the clang of swords filled the air, rolling out through the doors and windows of the inn. Oh gosh, I hope it's not super loud. I heard feet pound upstairs and screams of men dying, the wet thud of bodies dropping to the floor. Damn it! There's too many of them. We need backup. Is there anybody still out there? Um, well, there was someone, but... All the men who'd come with the captains ran around the back and couldn't hear Nagakira. Takeda, on the other hand, was stationed outside to arrest anyone trying to flee the building. What should I do? The only person left to go help them was me. But even if I did, what could I do? That was when I heard Kondo. Soji, are you all right? Nagakira called out from somewhere else in the inn. Damn it, Heisuke, don't die on me. Oh no. I had no desire to enter the slaughterhouse, with men killing one another. Even if I did, I had no illusions about my skill with the blade. I was sure to be killed before I'd even drawn it. But I could hardly stand around doing nothing. Run! Perhaps I couldn't fight. I could rescue the wounded, find them, and carry them out of the inn. I made up my mind, steeled myself, and ran inside. Inside, it was pitch black. The smell of blood hit me in the stomach like a fist, filling the air. There were dark lumps on the floor everywhere, the bodies of fallen men. Where were Okita and Heisuke? It had sounded like a good idea at the time, but as I looked around the charnel house, I realized there was no way I could carry two men outside. What should I do? I believe we're going to scope things out, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, we're going to scope things out. First time for Nagakira's route, we actually get to pick one. That isn't, hasn't been done yet. <laughs> if I wander aimlessly in the dark of the Ikeda Inn, I'm only going to become a nuisance. I should scope things out. I looked around the inn. Yeah! What? Out of the darkness, a Ronin appeared, his sword at the ready and headed straight for me. Ah! As his sword swept down, another interposed itself between us, Nagakira's blade. You're fighting me, pal. You don't get to run off unless I say you can. You. Arrgh! The Ronin gurgled wetly as Nagakira drove his sword deep into the man's stomach. Blood exploded everywhere. <laughs> I felt my throat suddenly rise. So much blood. Sorry to ask you this right now, but do you think you could go check upstairs? Nobody's getting past me, so can you go check for me? Just to be sure. You... I wanted to help, but I was focused on his hand. Nagakira, your hand. His left hand was drenched in bright crimson blood, as if the hand was simply gone. It looks awful. Nagakira glanced down at it and laughed. <laughs> that? <laughs> Didn't even know I had it. I'm fine, alright? Doesn't even hurt. Stop making that face. I... let's see what we need to do need to take care of Nagakira. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. But you're hurt. There's no way I can just walk away from that. I rushed to check his injury, but he gestured me to stay back. His troubled eyes met mine, and in them I saw eyes that witnessed his share of trying battles. His face was one of a warrior, one who was tired of fighting, but continued with honor and courage. Thanks, but... You don't have to worry about me right now. Please, check up on Soji and Heisuke for now. True, Nagakira's injury wasn't life-threatening, and we have yet to know what happened, sorry I hiccuped, to Okita and Heisuke for now. 
Nagakira urged me once more, and I had to leave behind my concern and look for them. Got it. Nagakira, please be careful. Bye! Nagakira's encouragement allowed me to push forward up the stairs. Inside the room, there was no flicker of light. Okita? Heisuke? I called out for them, but received no response. Were they not here, or... My heart wrenched from fear of the thought. Of the thought. Ugh! Someone! Heisuke! Heisuke! His forehead was gushing blood, and he laid there collapsed on the floor. In the next room, Okita was hunched on the floor, throwing up blood. I checked both of them to make sure they were breathing, and strapped cloth around their wounds, laying them gently onto the floor. I was desperately administering their emergency first aid when I heard someone running from the bottom of the stairway. It seemed like Hichikata's troops, who were at the Shikoku Inn, came to reinforce us here. Oh, thank goodness. Thanks to Saito and Harada's good work, the Ronin from the Ikeda Inn were dealt with. After making sure Okita and Heisuke were carefully carried off, I went downstairs. It seemed, for now, like the matters at the Ikeda Inn were resolved, a temporary moment of peace. However, the horrors from the battle haunted each corner of the inn. Downstairs, Nagakira popped out with his uniform in tatters. Oh, there you are. Thanks for finding Soji and Heisuke. Earlier. Yamazaki told me how great of a job you did treating them. You're real quick. Oh, please. It was nothing. I mean, I've dealt with many injuries back in Ed- Hey! Nagakira, show me your injury. Huh? Oh yeah, I guess I forgot about my injuries. Doesn't look too bad, huh? Nagakira lifted his left hand, still dripping from the open wound. This injury is nothing. There are plenty of men around me that have way more serious injuries, so go help them out. We are going to tell him. Wow, we got three in one episode. No, show me your hand right now. Ooh. No, Nagakira. I'm not leaving you here with that injury untended. Show it to me. Oh, butterfly. And I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!